previously on Baptism Overland. How long is this gonna take? Why is it bowing out? <laughs> Give up. No, I'm trying to... What? No, I'm trying to do a video. I don't need anything. Five minutes, man. Just stop the table saw for five minutes and let me do this damn segment. Give me like 20 minutes. I'll be right there. I don't care, man. This DIY project is gonna work. I am going to make it work. I have waited my whole life for this moment. Everything I have is at stake. <sighs> my dreams aren't dying today. Today is table day, part two of the roof rack underneath, underneath roof, ra roof rack, underneath roof rack table storage system. God, that's a mouthful. You've already seen part one. We are now into part two and finishing up this DIY project. Let's just get to it. First thing I needed to do was slide the table into the rail system to determine how much of the length I needed to trim so that the edging of the table lines up with the edge of the roof rack. I then removed about an eighth from that line to compensate for the aluminum edging I'll be attaching later. I then ran it to the table saw to trim it down to size. I also trimmed the width slightly to also accommodate for the aluminum edging. I then temporarily put the edging on to see if it will slide in okay or if I needed to trim it down some more. Remember, we have to clear the bolt heads that are inside the rails. For the edging, I just lined it up to the table and used a T-square to determine the length. I also made sure to create 4-5 to five degree angle lines where the edging will meet at the corners. From there, I cut them all just slightly longer than the size I measured so I can trim them down to the perfect fit. I then did a test fit around the whole table until the corners met perfectly. To protect the table, I covered both surfaces with a water sealant. Then on one side, I spray painted the truck bed coating to see how the finish will turn out. More on that later. Once the table dried, I installed the aluminum edging with some screws, making sure to countersink the holes because we don't want any screw heads sticking out that might get caught in the rails. From there, it's just one more final test fit to make sure it all slides smoothly. So the table is done, looks really, really good. I'm actually most proud of the corners. After some cutting and some grinding and some sanding and some tweaking, I was finally able to get the corners to match up really nicely. I also had to do some trim to the table so that it slides into those rails really easily. As far as finish, I decided to just keep the polyurethane clear coat look on it. I like this feel of like bare wood. I was gonna use that Raptor truck bed coating, but when I tried it on the other side, the paint left all these, I don't know, like lint on it and it's, it's kind of annoying. And I don't know if it's because I sprayed it onto plywood that it just did not react the way it would when you spray paint metal with it. So it didn't come out as nice as I thought. So I'm just gonna keep this for the bottom and then on top, We'll just keep it with that polyurethane look. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, Asia, that table looks amazing. You, sir, are truly a craftsman, like once in a generation. But um, where's the legs? If I'm being honest, the legs is the one thing that has been a challenge for me over the last couple of weeks. You have no idea how many legs I've ordered on Amazon and returned because they just weren't working out. I had the kind that you find on those plastic tables, the ones that have that U shape that kind of fold out, but when I got those, they were too big for this thing. They also had the kind of legs that look like thin wires and they kind of fold out as well and that didn't work out. So here's a challenge I've been thinking about when it comes to those kind of legs is that how strong are they going to be when they're folded up? Because what I don't want is to store this underneath the roof rack and then when I'm hitting the trails and I'm hitting a bump, those legs would just come loose and kind of swing down and hit the top of my roof and you'll just hear it knocking and yeah. So then I found this one other product, which is right here. Let me show you what it is. This is the Centipede, made by a company called Bora. They did not send this to me. I am not sponsored by them. Bought this with my own money. And I went with them because they had a lot of really great reviews online, mainly with how compact it is and how easily it deploys. This thing opens up really fast and I can close it back just as fast as well. Now this is not really a camping or overlanding table. This is actually a portable workbench station. And that's sort of one of the reasons why I got it. I wanted to buy something that could serve double duty where I can take it camping and overlanding 
understanding, but when I'm home, I can use it as well whenever I'm building stuff. Now, the one that I got was made for a two foot by four foot table, but seeing it now, it is a little too big for my table. I can collapse the legs in a little bit more, which will raise the table up a little bit higher, which is not a problem. We'll see how that works out though, because this table tends to want to continue opening up. Now there are some downsides going with this kind of setup though. Number one, this is just another thing that I do have to pack away. Now, albeit it's not going to be as large as trying to pack an entire table in my cargo area. This does fold down into a really nice compact size so that it won't take up that much room. But yes, it's just another thing that I have to remember to bring with me. Number two, you almost have to have a really flat ground to set this on. If you are overlanding in places where the ground is not always level, you might have a hard time setting this up. Now, personally, 90% of the time we've gone overlanding and camping, there's usually an area that I find that's pretty flat. So I may not have that much of a problem there. And in those times where it may not necessarily be ideal, then I just won't be deploying the table. Number three, it's not really tied down to the table at all, but this system actually has these little, oh, my finger almost got stuck. There's these holes here where you can basically create holes on the table and then kind of line up those holes and they give you these pegs to hold this table in place. I don't know, this is what I'm going with until I find a better solution. Ideally, what I would like are four individual legs that I know will stay up when I have them folded inwards. And then when I pull them down, they can also infinitely telescope, kind of like the way tripods will telescope where you just turn a knob, kind of move it however you want, then tighten it. That way, that can work on different uneven surfaces. But for now, this is what I'm going with. And regardless, I'm not getting rid of this thing. It's something I can definitely use at home. In fact, the Bora Centipede system has a ton of different accessories that you can attach to this table. So if you're doing a lot of projects at home, it, it'll come in really, really handy. So now I'm going to move on to working on the mechanism that will lock this table in place. Once we slide it through those rails, what we don't want is for that table to come sliding out. So we need to find a way to strap it down. And then I found these on Amazon. They're just simple clasps. They're actually really cheap. You can buy like a pack of six like this for like $8. And the mechanism is really, really simple. You basically attach this to one end and then this little hook thing will get attached to the edge of my table and it goes in like that and then when you want to lock it you basically just hook it on and then lock it into place like that and that won't go anywhere so it's going to basically sit like this on the edge of my roof rack with the table being right here the good thing about these is that these buckles here you can turn it and you can adjust the height of this thing so whatever application you have you can definitely make some fine adjustments to make sure that it's tight in there the only downside is, yeah, I'm going to have to drill into the side face of the roof rack because this needs a flat place to sit on. I can't mount it to the channel underneath the rack or the channel above the rack. It has to sit flat on the side of the rack like this. So I am going to have to drill some holes there. I plan to use some rivet nuts for that so that this will hold in place. If that still doesn't make sense, you'll see what I mean. Let's just go install it. Now, this is the part that has been making me really nervous because I have to drill holes into the rack. Everything needs to be precise as you only have one chance at this. First is finding the middle point of the rack. Now inside this rack there is a ledge in the middle that you can't see. It's about an inch from the bottom and about 7 8 inches from the top. I made a mark so I know not to be in that area when drilling the holes. I did one hole first by starting with a small pilot hole and then enlarging that hole for a rift nut. Then I did another test fit to make sure I was lined up with the second hole and repeated the process. Then I installed the rift nuts with the rift nut tool and bolted in the clasp with a lock washer. Once the clasp was installed, I set the table in to figure out where on the table side I'll be attaching the hook. And after attaching the hook, I was done. Or so I thought. All right, so let me just show you what's going on here and the things that I had to change. This lever doesn't stay up like I thought it would. I thought it would, once I pull it up this way, it will lock in place, but it doesn't. It's actually pretty loose. So if I don't have anything keeping this up, watch this. If this were to slide out, you see that? Now, it will clasp it like this, which is good because it won't come sliding out. But if I hit the brakes, this will slide back in. And then when it's ready to come back out again, it's just going to slide out that way. 
and now there's nothing holding it in place and that's not good that's a safety thing that I don't want on the road where this thing will just come sliding out and hit somebody behind me or just fall on the road so what I did was I created this little bracket here it's just an L bracket put a bolt in there and then I attached it to the rail that's in here and then all I do is I lock this in place like this and then I'll take a washer I'm gonna see if I can do this with one hand and then I take a wing nut so that I won't ever have to use any tools and that'll help lock that lever in its upright position so you see once I got it in see now this doesn't move at all it's very very secure it, it, it's one more step that I have to do but it was necessary I'm probably gonna cut this bolt down so it's not super long like this and it doesn't look bad but like I said I feel like I'm, I, I feel like I'm overthinking this whole thing but I, I'd rather have it be safe and secure like this but that's the system I have on locking this table underneath the rack without it sliding out <laughs> have officially descended into madness. I've had no sleep in seven days. My bank account has been depleted. My wife left me. My kid wants nothing to do with me. And all my clients dropped me. All because of this DIY project. Oh, it was supposed to be easy. I thought I was going to have this done in like three, four days and then I'll have videos for two weeks ready to go and here I am on a Friday supposed to release in a few hours and I am still just now wrapping this thing up. If you're getting this late, I'm so sorry. I had to make sure this was done right. So let's start with the rails, which I'm actually really proud of. Took me two tries, but on that second try, that Mark II, that one is the one that worked. The table slides in really nicely. There is a stop at the end. It's smooth, like it worked out to the T. Although I wish, I really, really wish I knew how to weld. Like I, I, I think I'm gonna take a welding class this summer because I really wanna learn how to weld. If I could weld a one piece rail system that I could just put up underneath that roof rack, I think that would be ideal. Like that would make things so much easier. Now the table on the other hand, well that's a whole different story and I feel like I am making this way more complicated than it needs to be which is something that I tend to do like a lot. The table in and of itself is simple, it's not hard, it's just a piece of two by four foot quarter inch plywood and then you put some aluminum trim along the edges and that's all it is. The problem came when I was trying to figure out the leg system, right? Like, because I went on Amazon and there's a bunch of different stuff, but some of these legs are pretty expensive. Like the ones that I've been looking at, they're like $40 for one leg and it basically swings and then you can kind of open it up and lock it into place and you can have different heights. 
forty dollars for one, and so getting four of them would cost about a hundred and sixty bucks, and then add that to everything else, then you're kind of coming close to that front runner table already, which is what I was trying to avoid to begin with. So then I went with the centipede legs that you saw earlier, and and I think it's great because I can definitely use this even at home. But I'm not super sold like this is what I want to bring to camp with me. Like it's just another piece of gear that I have to bring along. It's not that bulky and it's pretty compact. It's just now I have to open that up, then put the table on, which is also fine. But then I have to put those locking mechanisms on the corners to hold the table onto those legs. And it just, it's kind of messy looking, right? Like now those little pegs are taking up room on this table. And, and like I said, I don't know if that's something that I want to deal with, but I'm going to run with it for now. I will say, because I know me, I am going to be making this table again. Like I, I know it, like within the next two weeks or so, I know I am most likely going to be rebuilding this table and I'm probably going to try to make it better. And I'm going to try to figure out a better way to put legs on this thing because again, that's the part that's been haunting me. Now, as far as the locking mechanism, things look better on paper than an actual execution, right? Like it works, you you know slide the lock in and you kind of pull it up, but that lever doesn't stay up and it doesn't lock into place once you pull it upwards. So every time I tried to move the table, it would just undo that clasp and the table would still kind of slide out a little bit. I'm like, that's not good. So then I had to fashion something else that will keep the lever in an upright position and now it stays in place. I have to try to figure out if there's a better way to do this, but I've also already drilled holes into the roof rack, which I'm not gonna do again. I think this will this will be fine. Uh, the table doesn't move now. It, it's very, very secure and solid. It's just, again, it looks a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. But bottom line, I am glad that I now have a table that I can take camping and overlanding that doesn't take up any space inside my vehicle. It's something that I can put away underneath the rack make use of that space. I just have to do some fine tweaking. So the question is, would I recommend you to do this? Well, that depends. It all depends on whether you would rather sacrifice money or sacrifice time. Like if you're wanting to sacrifice money and you have the cash like that, then I would just tell you, get the front runner table system. It's already built. It slides in. You just kind of lock it down into your roof rack. I mean, it's pretty much a done deal and you're off to the races. Only downside is you're gonna have to shell out about $700 for that. But if you would rather sacrifice the time, then you can go the DIY route because you will save yourself a ton of money. Going this route, I spent maybe $125 if that. You are gonna have to sacrifice a lot of your time and go through a lot of headaches trying to figure it out. But if that's what you wanna do, you wanna try to see if you can innovate on this and make my system better, do it. In fact, if you do, and if you find easier solutions and I'm overthinking, Drop it in the comments below because I would love to hear from you guys. Might give me some ideas on how to improve this thing. Look, man, at the end of the day, I tell my son, failure is definitely an option. Like, fail and fail often. I know that there are areas of this where I failed and there are areas where I've succeeded. You have to fail sometimes, man. Like, and I, the reason why I'm showing you this video is to show you that, look, I got some ideas and I'm going to put it out there, but it may not always hit. Like, it might have some flaws and that hopefully inspires you to try to make it better. If you see this and you have a better way, let me know. And if you fail and you wanna keep trying, do it. Fail, keep failing because you'll get it right at some point. I mean, like looking back, despite all the headaches and how much aggravation this thing caused me, I did enjoy making it. I'm in the zone when I'm creating stuff, even when I'm failing. Like I just love getting my hands in there and trying to figure stuff out and problem solve. If you're that kind of person, then yeah, I implore you, go try this out for yourself. But please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time.